everyone and welcome back to Emkin Gardening. Today we're going to be doing a fun little montage of all of the pruning projects that we have to do in the early spring. In the last video, we did a little mini refresher course on how to prune your trees. So in this video, we are going to be pruning some of our fruit trees, but then we're also going to be going into hydrangeas, hydrangea standards, and roses both climbing and shrubs. Now, don't worry, this is going to be a very short montage type video. It's going to take us several days to kind of go through. We are going to take our time doing it. However, you're going to be seeing it hopefully very short and condensed. Within each section of the video, when we transition into a new plant, we will do a little mini recap on how to prune that shrub. So as you know, it's time to prune when you start seeing those buds pop. Our leaves are just now starting, so we're really gonna get on this tree. This is one of our cherry trees, and just like our mini refresher, we're going to go through the three Ds, dead, diseased, and damaged. We're going to open up the center, make sure it's in that goblet form. However, we are going to top off our fruit trees. We don't like our backyard to be too, too shaded, so we're going to top off the tippy tops of these trees and that's kind of the only difference between this and the crab apple in the last video so the other thing that i wanted to point out since we already covered how you leave a collar on the trees when you prune them is making sure that when you prune a fruit tree that you are making sure that you're pruning it above a bud or a leaf bud that you know is going to point in the direction that you want the new growth to go. So let's get a little bit closer. So right here is a prune that we did last season and we made sure that we pruned it right above a leaf bud that was pointing in the direction we wanted it to go. So instead of cutting it right here where that tree branch, the new growth would have gone that way, this is a completely new tree branch that grew last season in the exact direction we wanted it to go out this way, opening up the tree instead of growing straight inside of the tree, which you know we want to avoid any crisscrossing or branches that are growing inside because we want to open it up. So when you are picking a spot to prune, make sure that you're picking it in a place that's going to have the next growth go in the direction you want it to go. So this is a great example of that. Okay, so we're going to go through some of our fruit trees. We're not going to show all of all of these different categories because again, last year we did very in-depth videos on pruning each one of these things. We just wanted to put together a little montage to remind you all that it is this time of year to be doing your pruning. So we're not going to show every single one, but we're going to show a couple examples. So. For our fruit trees, we're going to be doing the three Ds. We're going to take out any crisscrossing branches or branches that are going in. And we're going to top it off. We are going to fertilize each category after we are done. All right, let's go.
one of our hydrangeas. This is one of our limelight hydrangeas. This is the shrub version. This one will get very big. And we're going to go over again very quickly how to prune your hydrangeas. Now, it is different than trees, so it's good to have a refresher on it. We are still going to do the three Ds, dead, diseased, and damaged. There's not gonna be a lot of diseased on your hydrangeas, but definitely dead and definitely damaged. So make sure you go through and do that. We are going to do a lot of the little thin branches, we are going to prune those out because we don't want the plant to go and put the, all of their energy into those little ones. We want these stronger branches for them to kind of bulk up. So we're going to kind of take out all of those really thin little branches. We're going to just take those ones out as well, but we are going to try to open up the center. We still want all of that airflow and light to penetrate through to avoid any types of diseases. So we are going to try to open it up. We are going to also try to shape our hydrangeas in a way that makes sense to us. This is an interesting bed, so we are allowing it to kind of go that way because that is where the light is. So this is a great time to shape it as well. The number one difference between your trees and fruit trees from hydrangeas is that we do the three bud method, which means when you are pruning your hydrangeas, you start at the very base and you're going to count up three buds, one, two, three, and that is where you're going to make your cut. So I know it seems awful that you're cutting off all of this growth that could have been leaves and blooms and what have you. I promise it's going to make your tree much, much, much healthier to do the three bud. We had a ton of success last year doing it, so we're going to do the exact same thing this year. Instead of cutting it to the biggest, healthiest bud, we are going to follow the three bud method. So following up, one, two, three, and cutting that, okay? So that is the difference between trees and hydrangeas is we're gonna do the three bud method. This is also the same method that we're going to use on our hydrangea standards. So the hydrangea tree version, we're going to use that same three bud method and follow all of the other same guidelines. Three Ds, opening up the center, taking out all of those weak stems, all of that jazz. You can tell our smooth hydrangea, the incredible blush behind me has already been done. We've really taken it back because if you remember, this one gets massive. So our smooth hydrangeas done, our pentacle hydrangeas are going to also be done the same way. So here we go. climbing roses we are going to take out any of those dead canes straight at the base we'll just get all of that right out then we're going to go through and really check on the three D's you might see all three of them in your roses so really pay attention now with the climbing roses you're gonna look a little bit differently because they have their main canes and then their lateral canes and the lateral canes are all of these canes that shoot up and these are the ones that have the blooms on top not the main canes so when you are doing the lateral cane pruning you are going to find a strong bud and make the cut right there after you've already gone through and got all the dead out and the damaged out um, you're gonna go through and find a really strong bud and put the cut right there 
So we're gonna do it right here. For example. Alright, so we're gonna go through and do all that, making sure we take out all of the dead stuff. And then at the very end, we are going to move everything at the base away, clean up the base really well before we fertilize it because we want to kind of eliminate any of those overwintering bugs that are there. We'll kind of get those away. You are still looking for really good airflow and really good light filtration. So make sure that you are considering that when you're looking at your climbing roses, this is trained a certain way. So it has a lot of light flow coming in already. But if you just have your climbing roses climbing up, take a peek and see if there's any way to kind of get that middle open so that the light and the airflow can get in. Roses are very, very susceptible to diseases like the black spots and then also all of the pests. So making sure that all of that is covered is key. So let's get after this climbing rose. shrub type roses it is a little bit different than your climbing rose so we're still gonna go in and first take out any of the canes that are completely dead already for example this whole cane right here is completely dead so we're gonna take that out to begin with so this one's gone and then with the shrub roses we're going to actually cut down one third of the shrub to begin with so you can really just kind of pick any spot and that's going to be your marker and you're going to just cut the whole thing at that level and then go back in with the three d's dead disease damage clean out the inside make sure there's light flow air flow make sure nothing's growing into the plant and then you'll be good with these kind of shrubs there we don't have like massive rose shrubs yet so they're very manageable but we're going to take it down to that one third line and then go in with the three d's and take out everything else that needs to be gone all right here we go this video we did take several days to complete this wonderful montage for you we wanted to take our time and we knew that we didn't want to show you all of the pruning projects since we did such in-depth videos last year so we just kind of wanted to brief over what you should be pruning right now what's ready to be pruned in this little montage we're going to link the rose hydrangeas and fruit tree videos at the end of the video and also under in the description box below since we can only have two at the end of our video 
So make sure to check those out if you want some in-depth information on pruning all of these wonderful things. Spring is clearly here. Everything is just popping. We've had a heat wave coming through, so everything's kind of jump-started their growth already. But we hoped that you liked this video, that you found it informative and reminds you to be pruning. We hope you're looking forward to spring as much as we are. Don't go anywhere. We have some planting videos coming up, so you want to stick around for those. We hope you're having a great weekend, and we will see you in the next video. Bye!